Today's topic is slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines. What I'm really talking about is if we're given a line, what is the equation of a line that is parallel to it and what is the equation of a line that's perpendicular to it? Well, let's look at a couple of things real quick. Here you can see that I'm given parallel lines. They're parallel because no matter what, as long as they continue going in both directions, these two will never intersect. Okay, they are parallel. Let's real quick take a look at their slopes, because that's really what we're concerned with. If I look at my given line, this black line, I will notice that I have a drop of 1 and a movement over 3 before it crosses again. So the slope of this given line is negative 1 third. Let's look at the line that we want to be parallel to it. I notice again here are some points that work. If I drop down, I'm only dropping down 1, and I'm going to end up going over 3. So the slope for my parallel line happens to also be negative 1 over 3. That's good, because we want them to be changing at the same rate, meaning that they will never intersect with each other. That means they have to have the same slope. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that they need to have the same slope, but they can't cross the y-axis at the same spot. They have to have different y-intercepts. If they cross at the same spot, they would be the same exact line, which would not make them parallel at all, because they're intersecting infinitely. We want no intersections. So, something to keep note of. Parallel lines have the same slope with a different y-intercept. That is key for parallel lines. Same slope, different y-intercept. Now we're going to look at perpendicular real quick. Okay, Here we go. My given line right here, we notice again it has a slope of negative one third. The line that we see is perpendicular to it. Well, I notice that this is a 90 degree angle all the way around, so this is definitely perpendicular. And if I look at my slope, I'm going up three and over one, so that's a slope of positive three over one. I want to compare these two real quick. Notice how my given line is heading down into the negatives. Negative one-third slope. And the line that's perpendicular to it is heading up towards the positives. It has a positive slope. This is the only way for these two lines to intersect at a 90 degree angle is for one of them to have a positive slope and the other to have a negative slope. That is key. The second thing we should notice is, hey, look at this. Here, I have 3 over 1. And on this other line, I have 1 over 3. I want them to be moving at reciprocal rates. That way they cross at a 90 degree angle. So I have to have a negative and I have to have a positive and I want my fractions to be flipped or reciprocated. So perpendicular lines have opposite signs, right, we want one positive and one negative, and what a lot of you guys think of as flipped, technically it's called reciprocal fractions for slope. Okay, that is the other key for finding parallel, uh, I'm sorry, perpendicular lines. Okay, perpendicular lines have opposite signs and flipped or reciprocal fractions for their slopes. All right, let's look at a couple of problems that involve this. The kind of problems that we're going to see are going to ask us to find the equation of a line that is parallel and perpendicular to the given line. Here's our first example. The given line is y equals 5 over 3x plus 12. 
this 5 over 3 is our slope, it's our m value. So if I'm looking for a line that's parallel, I know that I need to have the same slope. So y equals the same slope would be 5 over 3x. But don't forget what we said a minute ago. We have to have a different y-intercept. My y-intercept right now is 12. So I can pick any number as long as it's not exactly 12. I'm going to pick something like maybe negative 3. Again, you could have chose anything you wanted from here, as long as it's not 12. The really important thing is that we have the same slope. As far as perpendicular, again, I know it's going to be y equals something. Well, I was given a positive slope before, right? I don't see any negatives, so I want my slope now to be negative. And before, I was given 5 over 3. I want the reciprocal, so that would be 3 over 5. And what you guys would think as flipped, right? I had 5 over 3, and then I flipped it, so 3 is over 5. X. And we didn't really say anything about our y-intercept, because the truth is it doesn't matter what our y-intercept is. They can actually cross on the same point on the y-axis, and it's not wrong. So anything we want for a y-intercept I'm going to do something like plus 5 for this. Okay, so those are our uh, equations of a line that is parallel to and a line that is perpendicular to our given line. As you can see, I have a practice problem over here for you to try. One thing I might want to take notice of is that I have a whole number. Anytime I see a whole number, I'm going to just put it over 1. That way it's easier for when I start doing my perpendicular, I'll know what the flipped or reciprocal fraction should look like. So take a second to pause this and try it on your own. Come back and check out the answer. All right. Let's see how you did. We're looking for parallel. Remember, parallel has the same slope. So y equals same slope would be negative 3. I'm going to put it over 1. x. And we just have to choose a different y-intercept. I don't know. How about plus 3 instead? Okay. You don't have to have the 1 if you don't want it there, but I like it because when I do my perpendicular, which I'm about to do, I know that I want it to be 1 over 3 because I want it to be flipped. So I have y equals. Here, this slope is negative. I want it to be positive, so I'm not going to put any negative signs at all. And again, I already mentioned this. I want this thing to be flipped, so this should look like 1 over 3 this time. And as far as the y-intercept, it doesn't matter. Uh, how about 3 again? So here we go. We have a line that is parallel. And the line that is perpendicular to our given line. How'd you do with those? I think you guys should have done okay with them. Well, what if they give us some problems that aren't as right in our face with what the slopes are? What if they give us some coordinates? Well, that's not really anything to worry about. If we remember our slope formula, which I'm going to write it down real quick for us, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, all we have to do is just plug in the coordinates to the formula to find slope. So I'm going to label x1, y1, x2, y2. If I plug these in properly, I'm going to have negative 3 minus 2 over 8 minus 6. That's going to give me negative 5 over 2. That's the slope of my given line. Now, I don't know where it crosses the y-axis yet. So I'm going to make a really quick sketch. Just quick. Notice, I'm just making a quick little xy coordinate. If I was at 6, 2, it's going to be somewhere up here, let's say, and 8, negative 3 is somewhere over here. So if I look at my line, it's crossing way up here in the positive somewhere. Okay, I know I'm safe choosing a number that's down here, you know, somewhere lower than, uh, that's 2. So if I choose a number that's lower than 2, I'll be fine for my y-intercept. And I already know my slope. So, y equals, for a parallel line, same slope, negative 5 over 2x, 
And like I said, as long as I choose something that's below whatever that number is, so just pick a low number. I'm even pretty positive I can use the number 3. That definitely is not going to be 3 right there. That's a line that's parallel to it. Perpendicular. These are even easier. We don't care what the y-intercept is. So let's just look at this. I want it to be positive this time. And I want my fraction to be flipped. So that's going to be 2 over 5x. And again, anything I want for my y-intercept. Why don't we choose something like 12? Okay. I highly suggest making a quick sketch so you can see what your y-intercept is. You're not going to know the exact value. You just want to know an idea of what it is so you can choose something that's not going to affect it. So try doing this problem right here. Okay, here are the coordinates of the two points. Find the slope and then write a parallel and perpendicular line. Take a second to pause the video and try that one out. All right, let's see how you did. Here we go. I'm going to write down my x1, y1 and x2, y2. I do this every time so I don't risk messing it up. y2 is 7 minus y1 is negative 1. x2 is 2 minus x1 is negative 4. Oh, I've got two double negatives going on here. That means I want to be adding. I want to do 7 plus 1, which is 8. And I want to do 2 plus 4, which is 6. I'm going to reduce if I can. That's going to give me 4 over 3. All right. Something else I always suggest doing is seeing what this particular line looks like. Negative 4, negative 1 is here-ish. 2, 7 is up here-ish. No, I don't know this exact number, but I'm... I'm willing to bet that if I choose something around 2 or lower, I should be all set for my y-intercept. So, parallel line, y equals same slope, 4 over 3x. Choose something that's not that number. I don't know, plus 1 should work fine. And perpendicular, y equals, well, this is positive, so I want it to have the opposite sign, so negative, and I want these to be upside down, so 3 over 4x, and anything I want in the world for my y-intercept. I chose 100 because, like I said, it can be any number you want. All right, that's it for parallel and perpendicular lines. Hope this helped you out a little bit. Remember, keep those few key facts in mind. We want parallel lines to have the same slope. That way they never cross, but we want to choose a different y-intercept so they're not the same line. In perpendicular, we want to have one positive and one negative, okay? and we want to make sure that they have reciprocal fractions.